When Nikon introduced the Z-mount mirrorless system in 2018, the company's strategy was straightforward. Nikon launched with two models, the Z6 and the Z7, mirroring the successful formula it had followed during the DSLR era. The idea was to create one versatile, all-around camera for enthusiasts and hybrid shooters, while also offering a high-resolution alternative aimed at photographers who demanded maximum detail. This was Nikon's way of carrying over the philosophy that had made the D600-D750 and the D800-D850 series such iconic pairs in the DSLR world. Two years later, in 2020, Nikon reinforced this dual-track approach with the Z6 II and Z7 II, announced together as iterative but important upgrades. At that time, it appeared Nikon was establishing a consistent rhythm release both versions in tandem and give users a clear choice between versatility and resolution. However, when 2024 arrived, Nikon unveiled only the Z6 III, leaving many puzzled. The absence of the Z7 III was striking, and Nikon's silence on the matter raised serious questions about whether the series would even continue. This silence has become increasingly meaningful. It suggests that the Nikon Z7 II II may never actually arrive, and the reason behind this decision is not that Nikon has abandoned high-resolution photographers, but rather that the company has carefully reorganized its lineup in a way that leaves no obvious space for another Z7-style body. To understand why the Z7II seems unlikely, we need to look at Nikon's broader Z-mount structure today. At the entry level sits the Nikon Z5, a full-frame mirrorless camera designed for beginners or those seeking an affordable entry point into the system. Above it, Nikon introduced the ZF, a retro-styled body that combines modern imaging technology with classic Nikon design language, appealing to both enthusiasts and professionals drawn to its heritage aesthetics. The recently launched Z6 III now takes the role of Nikon's all-purpose enthusiast camera. Much like the D750 in the DSLR era, it offers a balance of speed, resolution, and affordability, making it the workhorse for a wide range of users. Then there is the Z8, a camera that delivers professional-grade resolution, speed, and video performance in a compact body, essentially inheriting the legacy of the D800 and D850 series. And finally, the Z9 stands tall as Nikon's uncompromising flagship, designed for the most demanding professional needs in sports, wildlife, and commercial production. With this clear hierarchy in place, it becomes difficult to see where a Z7II could fit. The original Z7 line was meant to be a higher-resolution counterpart to the Z6, but the Z8 now fills that role and much more. The Z8 already offers extremely high resolution, blistering performance, and advanced video features. If Nikon tried to introduce a Z7II now, it would be forced into an awkward position between the Z6 III and Z8. Priced too low, it would feel redundant next to the Z6 III. Price too high, it would appear underwhelming compared to the Z8. This is the key issue. Introducing the Nikon Z7 III today risks confusing buyers. Nikon has worked hard in recent years to simplify its camera lineup and avoid product overlap. Each model now has a clearly defined purpose and target audience. The Z5 serves entry-level shooters. The ZF appeals to style-conscious enthusiasts. The Z6 III is the hybrid workhorse. The Z8 covers resolution-heavy professionals. And the Z9 is the no-compromise flagship. If a Z7 III were added to this structure, it would blur the lines Nikon has carefully drawn. Instead of strengthening the brand's clarity, it would reintroduce the very overlap that Nikon has been trying to eliminate. In today's competitive mirrorless market, such clarity is essential. Buyers need to know instantly which Nikon body is right for them, without being caught between two models that serve nearly the same purpose. Another major factor influencing Nikon's decision lies in what photographers are actually demanding. When the Z7 and Z7 II launched, they stood out as the high-resolution options in the lineup. But now, the Z8 covers nearly all the ground that a hypothetical Z7 III would target, and then some. The Z8 delivers high megapixels, wide dynamic range, cutting-edge autofocus with subject detection, and professional-level video features. 
The only thing it lacks is a mechanical shutter, a feature that only a small subset of photographers continue to value. While a mechanical shutter can offer minor advantages in dynamic range and rolling shutter control, Nikon's advanced electronic shutter system has largely negated those concerns. It provides speed, durability, and quiet shooting, all of which outweigh the benefits of a mechanical system for most users. If the absence of a mechanical shutter is the only real difference a Z7II I could bring to the table, then Nikon has little incentive to create an entirely new camera body just for that. One possibility that has been raised is whether Nikon could reinvent the Z7II into something different altogether. Instead of continuing its role as a resolution-focused stills camera, Nikon could potentially pivot the Z7II into a video-oriented model, akin to Canon's R5C, Sony's E7S III, or Panasonic's S5IIX. This would not be an impossible move. Nikon already has the sensor technology, the processing capabilities, and thanks to its recent acquisition of RED, the potential intellectual property to build a cinema-ready mirrorless body. A dedicated video camera would fill a noticeable gap in Nikon's current lineup, where every model remains primarily stills focused despite offering strong hybrid performance. However, this would require Nikon to step away from what the Z7 lineage has always represented. The Z7 has been synonymous with high-resolution stills, not video specialization. Recasting it as a video-focused model would mean abandoning that identity entirely. More likely, if Nikon does pursue a cinema-oriented mirrorless camera, it will debut under a fresh name rather than as a Z7 successor. In the end, the Nikon Z7 III is a camera that makes sense on paper, but not within Nikon's current business strategy. The company has deliberately moved toward a simplified lineup, avoiding redundancy and ensuring each model has a clear identity. For photographers who waited eagerly for the Z7 III, the reality is that Nikon has already delivered what they were looking for. It's called the Z8. Still, there remains a small chance Nikon could surprise the market. Prototypes may have been tested, and leaked specifications show what might have been. A 6167MP full-frame camera with 8K video, advanced autofocus, and hybrid functionality. Such a body would have been a true evolution from the Z7 II, but for now, it appears the Z7 line has reached its conclusion. Much like Nikon once retired certain DSLR series when they no longer fit the company's direction, the Z7 played an important role in the early years of Nikon's mirrorless journey, but as the lineup matured, its role was absorbed by stronger, more versatile cameras. Unless Nikon sees a dramatic shift in market demand, the Z7 II may remain a what-if, a chapter of Nikon history rather than the beginning of a new story.